public testimony today is Adia Ch Chirund Chirundolo. Um, her affiliations are do no harm and list no conflicts. Our search showed nothing on the CMS Open Payments Database. So a doctor whose last name I didn't say correctly, I'm going to push a button to allow you to give your testimony. You have three minutes. Please begin by stating any other conflict of interest you may have and uh, begin your testimony. Thank you. Excellent. Can you hear me? Yes. And would you please pronounce your name for us? Absolutely. My name is Aida Chirondolo. Thank you. And I have no conflicts of interest to report. First of all, I just want to thank the commission for the opportunity to testify today. I'm a board certified emergency medicine physician with over 20 years of clinical experience. I practice in New Hampshire and I am a volunteer for Do No Harm. Evidence-based medicine is the most compassionate care a clinician can provide. WPATH version 8 guidelines are not rooted in evidence and therefore cannot be considered standard of care. When children are distressed, it is natural to want to alleviate their suffering. Distress about gender is no different, but medical pathways of gender affirming care treat one narrow presumed cause of distress. This approach appears compassionate, but it is not evidence based. And as many other countries have concluded, the evidence for medicalization of children with gender distress is poor, and therefore this pathway does not represent best practices. Last month, British pediatrician Hilary Cass released the largest systematic review of gender-affirming care to date. Systematic reviews are the highest level of evidence analysis that guide best clinical practices. The Cass review found no way to predict which children will maintain a lasting transgender identity no high quality evidence for puberty blockers or cross-sex hormones, and no convincing evidence that hormones reduce the risk of suicide in patients suffering gender distress. The CAST review concludes that first line treatment should be a holistic approach utilizing psychotherapy and screening for neurodevelopmental and mental health conditions. Psychotherapy is the first line treatment approach for any mental health challenge a child experiences, though this should not be surprising. The World Professional Association for Transgender Healthcare, WPATH, is cited as the authority on the most up-to-date and reliable recommendations for the treatment of gender distress. However, the CAS review found that WPATH's most recent guidelines, Standards of Care version 8, did not base recommendations on strong evidence. The review found a circular basis of reference between WPATH and the Endocrine Society guidelines WPATH helped draft the Endocrine Society's 2009 guidelines, while WPATH version 7 guidelines referred to the Endocrine Society's guidelines. These two guidelines heavily influenced almost 20 other guidelines. WPATH's newest standards of care version 8 in turn referenced WPATH version 7 guidelines. The CAS review notes, quote, most of the guidelines described insufficient evidence about the risks and benefits of medical treatments in adolescents, particularly in relation to long-term outcomes. Despite this, many of them went on to cite this same evidence to recommend medical treatments, end quote. WPATH version 8 cannot be relied upon as standard of care. I urge the Health Evidence Review Commission to complete a formal medical technology assessment of gender-affirming care and develop guidelines that are truly evidence-based. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so I think we have two more commenters. I think why don't we hear from everyone and then if we, like I said, this isn't related to stuff that's on the agenda today. Um, and we've already heard, uh, you know, by way of context, um, there, there had already been uh, this issue raised in a request for us to, uh, look with, with the center's help um, to look at the evidence. Um, and I believe we're kind of working through uh, with the state government to sort of figure out where this is situated in relation to the legislation that's already passed. So that, that's kind of the context. I have one question for you, Dr. Serendula, just out of curiosity. What, what's the do no harm uh, group that you're part of? Can you tell us a little bit about that? 
Sure, it's an organization that advocates for evidence-based uh, safe medical care. 